hi and welcome to my channel if this is your first time here welcome to your practice if not welcome back you may have noticed i did a little changes a little rearranging behind me a fun little artwork that i did with my son a giant lego that i had to make some space for on the wall so something fun to see and something new today's practice we have a fire sequence the fire element in yoga is related to digestion. And of course, when we think digestion, we think of processing the food that we intake. But uh, besides that, the fire element also has to do with our ability to process or digest emotions and thoughts. So we will work on balancing our fire element today with poses that center around the home of the fire element, which is in the navel or the core center. So as you can imagine, there will be a lot of core work today. Uh, and at the end, we will have engaged that element and hopefully encourage more enthusiasm in our day, compassion, and ability to be warm and share our loving energies with others. So from here, go ahead and take a seat. Just come to an easy sit position. Legs are comfortable, maybe sitting up on a block if you'd like that. Eyes are gently closed. Allow the hands to either come to the lap or just resting gently on the knees. Nice, gentle breaths. The crown of the head is tall, spine is long. The sit bones are rooted into the mat. Allow your thoughts to float by in today's practice without judgment. Observe your thoughts as an outsider. Let them pass. I'd like to start our practice with a quote today by the poet Rumi. In the quote, he says, set your life on fire. Seek those who fan the flames. As we practice today, even though maybe you're practicing at home, alone, maybe with a friend, but seek that energy of others, sharing our energies and our love. One more nice inhale and exhale. Start to flutter the eyes open. And from here, we're going to start with a few wrist warm ups. In today's practice, we will have uh, some time spent in plank pose and also in downward dog and just being on our wrists a little bit more. Uh, so it's nice to spend a few minutes just warming up our wrists. Go ahead and roll over into a tabletop position. Knees are underneath the hips and the wrists are directly underneath the shoulders. Fingers are spread out wide. From here, we'll just start to rock the hips forward until you feel a slight pressure in the wrists, nothing too much, avoiding anything sharp. Rock back and rocking forward. Doing that about four or five times here.
From here, we'll spin our fingers so that our fingers are facing each other. Wrists are on the outside of the mat. Start to lean to the right and to the left. You don't need to go far, just an inch or two. Feeling that stretch along the wrist, into the fingers, maybe up into the forearm. Spin the fingers to the, until they're facing the outside edge of the mat. And we'll rock side to side from there. Notice any differences from one side to the other. And from here, we'll take the hands, walk them back so that you're a little bit closer to your knees. You're a very narrow tabletop position here. Take your left fingertips. They will turn so that they're facing your knee and the right fingertips can stay facing out towards the top of the mat. From here, we're going to slightly bend the elbow and you don't need to come back very far. This can be a pretty intense stretch onto the, into the fingers and the wrist and begin to roll the wrist up and back, feeling the stretch deeply into the fingers. And then rolling back down. Two more times here. Rolling up. And then rolling the wrist back down. Spin those left fingertips back to face the top of the mat and then turn the right hand towards your knee Start to peel the right wrist off the mat. Elbow bends and the lower back down. You might feel much tighter on one hand than the other. I definitely feel it in my right side more than the other side, and probably because I'm right-handed. I'm gonna go for a couple more here, just peeling off the mat until you come about to that first knuckle of the fingers and then coming back down. From here, we'll just clasp the fingers and roll out the wrists. Warming them up, making little figure eights with your wrists. Very good, shaking them out. All right, go ahead and come back into your tabletop position. Push back shortly into a down dog, and we're just going to walk ourselves up to the top of the mat. Push firmly into the ground. Come up to your mountain pose. Grounding in mountain. Feet are spread hip width apart. Feeling into all four corners of the feet. Lifting up through the arches. Hands are open at our side. Taking a deep breath into mountain. We'll start our flow with a couple of Surya Namaskar A's, and then we'll follow that with a couple of Surya Namaskar B's. I'll start you through it. We'll take the first one a little bit more slowly. I probably, probably pause in a few of the poses. Inhale the arms up to the sky. Exhale, lowering down. Utanasana and stay in your forward fold pose here. Deeply bending the knees, chest probably resting just lightly on the thighs, fingertips are on the mat, head hanging down. If this is your first asana for the day, you might feel very tight in the back of the legs. Go ahead and bend the right knee, straighten the left leg. Bending the left knee, straightening the right leg, feeling the backs of the legs start to open up. One more time. Bending the left knee. Bending the right. And come back to neutral, head hangs down. Inhale. Halfway lift, hands can come to the shins or fingertips to the mat. Exhale, lower the hands down to the mat. Step back, prepare for chaturanga. 
Lower, bring the elbows in, shift forward. Gaze goes up, inhale, upward facing dog. Exhale, in your down dog. In downward dog, start with the knees bent deeply. Pausing here again, finding our form. The shoulders are spread wide across the mat, pressing into your fingertips, maybe pedaling the feet out. Shifting the hips from side to side if that feels right to you. Come to stillness, tailbone up to the sky. From here, inhale, step or jump to the top of your mat. Halfway's lift. Exhale, forward fold. Inhale, arms come up to mountain. We'll do that once more. Exhale. Uttanasana, flowing a little bit more quickly this time. Inhale, halfway's lift. Exhale, step or jump back to Chaturanga. Lower down. Inhale up to upward facing dog. Exhale, downward dog. Inhale, step or jump to the top of your mat. Exhale, forward fold. Inhale all the way back up to mountain. You know what? Let's do that one more time. Exhale. Uttanasana. Inhale. Halfways lift. Exhale. Plant the hands down into the mat. Lower down. Elbows in. Navel draws up. Looking up. Upward facing dog. Exhale. Downward dog. Inhale. Feet come to the top of the mat. Exhale. Forward fold. Inhale. Arms up, exhale, hands come back to the sides or to prayer. You're back in mountain pose. Reset here. Surya Namaskar B. Inhale the arms to the sky. Exhale, legs together, coming into your chair pose. Sink back into the hips. We'll pause here. Weight is in the heels, biceps are alongside the ears. Holding in our chair pose, legs are zipped together. One more inhale, exhale, forward fold. Inhale, halfway lift. Exhale, plant the hands, step back, chaturanga lower. Inhale, upward facing dog. Exhale, down dog. From your down dog, inhale the right foot to the sky. Draw it through between the hands. Warrior one on the right side. We'll pause here to think about our form. Tucking the tailbone slightly. The biceps are alongside the ears. Shoulders are lowering and spread down the back. Back leg is strong as we push into the right edge, the outside, correction, the outside edge of the left foot. One more inhale here. On the exhale, drop the hands down to the mat, lifting the right foot back, making space. Lower down, chaturanga. Inhale, upward facing dog. Thighs are lifted. Exhale, down dog. Now bring the left foot to the sky. Inhale it through between the hands. Spin the right foot out. Sink into your warrior one on the left side, pausing here. Knee should be directly over the ankle. Pressing into the outside edge of the right foot now. One more inhale. On the exhale, sweep the hands down towards the mat. Push into the mat, make space for your leg to return back. Exhale, chaturanga lower. Inhale, upward facing dog. Exhale, down dog. On an inhale, step or jump to the top of the mat. Halfways lift. Exhale, forward fold. Inhale, chair pose. Exhale, mountain. From mountain, 
take an inhale exhale forward fold inhale halfway lift exhale step or jump back to your chaturanga lower down inhale upward facing dog exhale back in our downward dog inhale the right foot up to the sky draw it through between the hands spinning the toes out lowering into your warrior one exhale hands sweep back into the mat placing the right foot back lowering chaturanga inhale upward facing dog exhale down dog inhale that left foot up draw it in between the hands spinning the right toes out lowering into your warrior one on the left side exhale hands to the mat lower down into your chaturanga inhale upward facing dog exhale down dog inhale step or jump to the top of the mat exhale forward fold inhale to your chair pose exhale mountain how about one more time take an inhale in your mountain exhale chair pose sinking into your hips coming into your forward fold uttanasana inhale halfway lift exhale stepping back chaturanga lowering down inhale upward facing dog exhale down dog inhale the right foot to the sky bring it between the hands lowering into warrior one exhale chaturanga lowering down inhale upward facing dog exhale down dog inhale the left foot up draw it in turn the right toes out lowering the hips warrior one hands lower down to the mat pressing into the mat as you squeeze in the elbows upward facing dog inhale exhale downward facing dog from down dog step or jump to the top of the mat exhale forward fold inhale chair pose lower exhale mountain pose on the inhale hands can come to heart center very nice we should feel pretty warm by now i'm just going to fix my mic here just give me a second really good from here we're just going to transition back to our downward dog inhale arms up to the sky exhale swan dive forward and from here just step the feet back placing them for your downward facing dog at this point we're going to really start to build some fire within our core feel free to take some of your poses your planks at your knees if you'd like or rest in your child's pose if you're ready from your downward dog roll over your toes and come into plank in plank your hands your fingers should be spread wide wrist directly underneath the, the uh, the shoulders elbows are just slightly bent draw in firmly with the navel engaging that core feeling that engagement on all sides front and back body heels are pushing back the thighs and the legs are also engaged here to stay strong in our plank and we're going to hold for about 20 more seconds This is why we warmed up our wrists at the beginning. As always, you can lower at any time and come into child's pose. You should be nice and long from the crown 
all the way to the heels, gazes down in between the fingers. One more inhale and on an exhale, push back to your downward facing dog. From down dog, we'll all take a moment and drop to our knees. Knees can come wide. Hands come back behind you, rest your shoulders and take a little break in child's pose. We have some more core work coming up. So we'll just take a moment to regain our strength and our focus. On your next inhale, come back up to a tabletop position. From tabletop, push yourself into a downward dog. And in our downward dog, weights distributed evenly, front to back, right to left. From here, we're gonna take some plank or knee to chest challenge. So roll forward onto your toes, coming into plank, drawing in the navel, lift that right foot off the mat, tucking the knee in, pulling the knee towards the right elbow. Knees at the right elbow, holding strong. From the right elbow, we're gonna go across, take the knee to the left elbow, drop the knee down towards the left wrist, and then draw the knee across to the right wrist until we come back up, lifting, engaging with the core to bring the knee back to the right elbow and place the foot back down, you're back in plank. Let's do that on the left side. Inhale the left foot up, draw the left knee to the left elbow, left knee to right elbow, lowering down to right wrist, drawing it across to the left side and picking it back up. Inhale the left foot back, regaining our structure here in our plank. One more time each side, inhale the right foot up, draw the right knee in to the right elbow, right knee to left elbow, dropping to the left wrist, over to the right wrist, back to the right elbow, back to plank. From here, draw the left knee in to the left elbow, over to the right elbow, back down to the right wrist, I should say, and then over to the left wrist, and then draw the knee back up to the left elbow, place the left foot back, and you're back in your plank pose. From here, push back into a down dog, Couple of breaths. Allow your breath to come back to a steady, slower pace if we started to lose our breath in our pose. Lower the knees down and come back into our child's pose. Taking a moment here to relax. Our next poses will involve much more deep rotations in our midsection, further activating that fire in the core. On the inhale, push yourself up to a tabletop. Exhale, plant your palms and push yourself up to a downward facing dog, tailbone to the sky. From your down dog, raise the right foot to the sky. You're in a three-legged dog. From your three-legged dog, bend that right knee deeply, draw the right foot to the left hip, opening up the hips, 
almost like you're trying to stack the hips on one another. From here back to a three-legged dog and inhale the foot between the hands. The left heel stays raised. Push yourself up into a crescent lunge on the right side. Hands come up to the sky. The biceps are alongside the ears. Allow the neck to stay long. Tailbone is slightly tucked. Pushing through that back heel to engage the back leg. On an inhale, draw the hands down to heart center in prayer. And on an exhale, we'll start to twist to revolve our crescent lunge over to the right side. Left elbow comes to the outside of the right knee. Maybe looking up to the sky. Don't forget about the back leg. Continue to draw that back of the left thigh up. Breathing here. On the next inhale, we'll unravel, come back to our crescent lunge on the right side. Hands are still at prayer. Take an inhale, and on the exhale, push firmly into that right foot. We're going to pop ourselves up to chair pose. Toes are touching, sinking back into the hips. The arms can come to the sky. Nice long spine here from the crown of the head down to the tailbone. Inhale, the hands can come to prayer. From here, we're going to revolve our chair pose. Starting on the left side, take an inhale, exhale the right elbow to the outside of the left knee. Looking up. Take a gander at your knees and just make sure that you don't have one knee shifting too much far forward from the other. They should be just about even. One more inhale and on an exhale, maybe getting a little bit more twist, a little more length. Okay, and from here, we're going to try our side crow. If you don't have side crow in your posture, then I suggest either staying in chair pose, you can just make a normal chair or come to a child's pose, or if you would like to hang out in downward dog while we attempt side curl on the left side, that's great. Take wherever you're at today. I'm gonna to come to my toes, so I'm in a very low squat position. I'm also gonna make a little bit more room for myself on my mat. You can probably tell that I practice on a board so I don't want my hands going off of the board. For me, the board is just for extra stability, especially in balancing postures. In your low squat, take an inhale and exhale, twist over to the left. From here, we'll set up with chaturanga hands. So fingers are turned out slightly, gripping into the mat firmly, and your biceps are turned out, just like you're lowering into a chaturanga so that you're keeping the elbows in when we lower. From here, lift your hips up slightly. Start to shift over towards your elbows. The left hip is going to sit on top of the left elbow, the crook of your left knee into the right elbow. Shifting forward, lifting from the core, maybe allowing your feet off the mat to fly. On the next inhale, lower down. If you were in child's pose or down dog, join us back into chair pose. With your chair, your arms can be up alongside your ear. You can just hold in prayer posture as I am. Press down firmly into your feet. Inhale, up to mountain. Exhale, lower into our forward fold. Inhale, halfway lift. Exhale, we'll chaturanga lower to the mat. 
elbows in tightly, looking up, upward dog. Exhale, back to our downward facing dog. And we'll take that sequence on the left side, draw the left foot into the air for three-legged dog. Exhale, left heel comes towards the right hip, trying to stack the hips. Shoulders are still even. Inhale, open back up to a three-legged dog. Draw the left foot in between the hands, adjusting your stance if needed, coming up to our crescent lunge on the left-hand side. Tucking the tailbone, engaging in that core, firing up the back leg. Inhale, hands come to heart center, and we'll twist. Take an inhale again. Exhale, bring the right elbow to the outside of the left knee. Gaze maybe comes to the sky. Pressing into that left knee with the outside of the right elbow. One more breath in here. Maybe exhaling just a little bit more deeply. Inhale back to center. Return to crescent. From here, we're gonna press down firmly into that left foot. Inhale, bring the right foot up into our chair pose. Exhale, lower down. Sinking into the hips. Feeling that weight in the back of the heels. Inhale, exhale. The hands come to heart center. Again, we're going to twist our chair. The left elbow comes to the right, outside of the right knee, looking up towards the sky, feeling that deep twist in the midsection. Inhaling here, exhaling, twisting a little deeper. On your next inhale, come back to chair. If you want, stay in your chair pose or lower down into a child's pose or downward duck. I'm gonna set up for our side curl on the right side. Again, lowering into a very deep toe squat. Twisting over to my right side this time, placing my hands on the mat beside me. Turning my hands out, fingertips out slightly, but gripping the mat deeply and starting to bend the elbows. Right hip rests on the right elbow. I think I have just enough room here with the couch. And the left hip, or the knee is on the left elbow. Gaze is down and forward, drawing in with our core. On an inhale, lower the feet down. Center yourself back on the mat. Exhale the heels to the ground, return to chair pose. From your chair pose, push firmly into the feet. Inhale, mountain arms up to the sky. From your mountain, exhale, forward fold. Inhale, halfway lift. Exhale, step or jump back to your chaturanga. Lower down. Inhale, upward dog. Exhale to down dog. From down dog, we'll just lower our knees into tabletop. Tabletop, we're just going to transition here across the ankles. Come back onto your bottom. Now, adjust yourself on the mat, coming about into the center of the mat. We'll set up for boat pose or navasana. Soles of the feet are flat on the mat sitting on our sit bones, balancing. From here, raise your right toes off the mat. Then raise your left uh, toes off the mat. So shins are parallel. Maybe you stay here. If you are able, you can extend both of the legs long for your boat pose. Holding here, back is straight, avoiding rounding. We wanna be nice and long. 
balancing on the sit bones. On the next inhale, we're going to lower our boat pose into low boat. So wherever you're at, if you're in high boat, go ahead and lower the feet almost all the way to the mat, but still hovering. Upper back is hovering off the mat. Exhale, back to your boat pose. If that's too tough for you and you would like to change it up, you can keep yourself here in your modified boat, maybe touching one toe down at a time and just doing some toe taps with your shins at parallel. If you'd like to take some more high and low boats with me, we're gonna do about five more of those. Extending the legs long. Inhale, lower. Exhale, drawing in deeply from the core, pulling the legs up. Inhale, lowering down. Exhale, feet come to the sky. Inhale, lowering down. Exhale, coming up to boat. Feeling those shakes everywhere. Inhale, lowering down. Exhale, up to boat. I think we have one more. Inhale. Lowering down. Exhale to your boat. Here we're going to hold for three breaths. Very good. Lower the feet to the mat. Go ahead and lower your back all the way down to the mat. Draw your knees in. Knee to chest pose. Wrap your arms around the knees. Give them a squeeze. Maybe rock side to side a little bit. Massaging out the back. Massaging out the abs, the internal organs. That's great. From here, take a hold of the backs of the thighs. Slowly roll yourself up a couple of times until you roll yourself up to a seated position. And we'll start to cool down our practice today. So, soles of the feet are resting on the mat. Go ahead and draw the left heel in until it's on the outside of the right hip. So a pretty narrow almost like we're starting our cow face pose. The right foot is going to come to the outside of the left knee, but the heel is still flat on the mat. From here, take the right hand, right palm, just behind the right hip. Inhale, the left arm to the sky, create space. Exhale, wrapping that arm along the right knee. On the exhale, twisting. Inhale, growing tall from the crown to the tailbone, creating space and then maybe exhaling just a little bit more with that space you're given. You can also draw your left elbow to the outside of the right knee, pushing into that right knee, finding a little bit more of a twist. On the next inhale, unravel. Allow the feet to rest flat on the mat once more. This time, draw the right heel in towards the left hip. The left foot crosses over the left knee. Foot, the sole of the left foot is still flat on the earth. From here, the left hand comes behind you. Inhale the right hand up. Exhale, hug that left knee in and twist. Lengthening, lengthening on the next inhale, 
maybe twisting a little deeper. The twist should be coming from the middle back, the thoracic portion of the spine. On the next inhale, go ahead and unravel from your twisty shape. From here, we'll roll back down slowly onto our mat. Very slowly, see if you can match my pace. Start to tuck the tailbone in. Lowering down bone by bone. about half waist down. From here, come up one inch. Making the effort of every pose that we move through today. And slowly lower all the way down to the mat. Awesome. Allow the legs to go out long and we'll come into our supine twist on the right side, draw the right knee in, giving it a little squeeze. From here, allow the right knee to drape over the left side. You may wanna shi shift your hips to the right a little bit to allow your spine to stay nice and aligned as we twist. And the reason for that, shifting the hips over to the right side is that your spine should be in one straight line, just like it's going right down the center of the mat. And we're just twisting out along that line, almost like we're wringing out a rag, creating a twist along that long line. Arms can be in the T-shape. Maybe you want them in cactus for today. I enjoy having my left hand on the outside of my right thigh just to create a little bit more of an anchor. On an inhale, unwind. Place that right leg out long. Draw the left knee in. Give it a squeeze. Allow the left knee to fall over to the right side. Shift the hips just slightly over to the left, keeping that long line in the spine, but wringing it out. On the next inhale, unravel. Left hip comes back to the mat. The left leg goes out long and we'll set up in our Shavasana pose. Feet fall gently to the sides, making space with the arms, taking up space on your mat, opening the hands up towards the sky. Fingers just curl in gently Allow your eyes to close. Returning our breathing to normal. And noticing the rise and the fall of the belly. Notice how the navel lifts with each inhale falls with each exhale. Our powerhouse, our home for our fire element, centered around the navel.
Feel free to rest in this posture for as long as your body needs. If you're ready to come out, start to wiggle the fingers and the toes. Squeeze the fingers and the toes in tight, waking up the rest of the body, blinking the eyes open. From here, draw the feet in, either rolling over onto your side or gently rolling up to a seated position. joining me in our easy seat. I'd like to close our class today with a fire mudra. The fire mudra takes the ring finger and the thumb and you'll draw the tip of the ring finger into the very base of the thumb and that tip will stay tucked in there and we'll wrap the thumb over and pressing lightly onto the second bone, that front flat bone, when you bend your finger, and it'll press light, press onto that bone on the ring finger. The rest of your fingers will stay long. We'll do that with the opposite hand, taking the tip of the ring finger, placing it at the very base of the thumb, wrap that thumb over the top of the ring finger, pressing into that second long bone of the ring finger, and from there, the backs of the hands can just rest gently onto the knees. Breathing gently. And we'll close today's practice with the quote that we started with. Set your life on fire. Seek those who fan the flames. From here, draw the hands towards heart center in prayer. Bow the head, tucking the chin. Thank you so much for being here at this class today. I hope you enjoyed it. Um, and hopefully after activating your fire element, you're able to look towards your future today with some bright, clear eyes with enthusiasm. So get out there. Have a great day. Thanks again. Bye.